The Indiana Hoosiers take down the Wisconsin Badgers in the biggest win of the year. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked on Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. We are a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers. You're the ones who are here day in, day out. This is your go-to spot. It's part of your routine, and we appreciate you making that so. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. The Indiana Hoosiers defeat the Wisconsin Badgers 74 to 70. By far the biggest win of the season. No fire alarm can stop us. No weather can get in our way. The Indiana Hoosiers were not to be beaten. On this night inside of Assembly Hall, they come up with the biggest win of the year, and uh, it's really not even close. We've got a whole breakdown for that for you today here on Locked on Hoosiers. Plus, we'll take a look at likes and dislikes, as we always do on the show, and then we'll also take a look at the women's team who got themselves a nice win on the road and looking ahead for both the men and the women. Indiana hosted Wisconsin. The Badgers, a team that's in the NCAA tournament by far, a team that is Really been a top 25 team most of the year besides this little slide that they've been on. But the Hoosiers inside of Assembly Hall took about 20 minutes longer than it should have. But hey, if that's what we got to do to start winning games, somebody go pull the fire alarm next time too against Michigan State when they come here to Assembly Hall. And maybe we'll get a win on that night as well. 74 to 70 is the final score. And this is the Indiana team that we've been waiting for. This is the Indiana team that we knew was there. We knew that this team existed. We knew that this type of a performance existed. And was it perfect? No, it wasn't perfect by any means, but it was good enough. It was good enough to get the win, look good doing it, get out to a big lead. You suffered that big lead. You even let Wisconsin take the lead. And then you fought back, you fought down the stretch, and you actually beat a team. And what I mean by that is when you faced adversity, when you had a chance to either win or lose down the stretch in the last four minutes of the game, you took command, took control, and you closed out a win. We have not seen this team do that this year, and it was so nice to see us finally do that, beating Wisconsin 74 to 70. We've got likes and dislikes coming up in just a little bit, but man, how about Khalil Ware? How about Khalil Ware with one of the best performances you're going to see this season in college basketball across the board, across all positions, and across all levels? 27 points for Khalil Ware, 11 of 12 from the floor, one of one from downtown, four of four at the free throw line, and had 11 rebounds plus five blocks. People want to forget that part. A massive night for Khalil Ware, and it was all because he was aggressive. He went towards the basket. He was making shots, making jump shots. The stroke and the floater was looking so good tonight, and he went four of four at the free throw line, and I think that's a big part of this too in a walking double-double, something I've said all season long. He should do that time in and time out. But a major reason that he was so effective from the floor was not a guy that led the team in points. He didn't even lead any of the major starters in points. He was your fourth leading scorer from the starters, okay? It was Trey Galloway. Trey Galloway maybe just played his best game of the season. And he only scored six points, but he was the man tonight. Didn't shoot the ball well by any means. Three of 10 from the floor, only six points. Was 0 of 4 from downtown, but he had four rebounds and 12 assists. Yeah, like 10, 11, 12 assists. Most of those to 
Malik Renew and Khalil Ware. We'll get to Malik Renew in just a moment. But this is what Galloway should have been doing months ago. Weeks ago, maybe. Months ago, maybe. This is what he should have done. He's a senior facilitator. When the shot hasn't been there this year, which, let's be honest, for the most part, it just hasn't been there, this is what he should have gone to. This is what he should have said. You know what? I'm going to be this guy. This is going to be my role, and that's how we're going to play this thing out. And who said yesterday's show, on yesterday's show, that the pick and roll with Trey Galloway to Khalil Ware was going to be the key to this game? Who said that? Oh, I did. I said that. And here's how it happened. You saw what happens when they went to that. It was undefensible. They could not stop it. Wisconsin couldn't. The pick and roll with Trey Galloway and Khalil Ware. Trey Galloway and Malik Renew. And then, as I said on yesterday's show, the defense, who was already collapsed in the paint, was going to collapse even more. And then you had guys like Trey Galloway who could shove it outside for three. And guess what? He did that too. And Indiana knocked down enough of their three, six of 14 from downtown, to make it a ball game. And that's how teams win games in college basketball. It's not hard. The game plan's not hard. Execution, sure. Overcoming good defense, absolutely. But it was so nice to see us finally have a game plan, execute the game plan, and continue to go back to the things that work even when the other team adjusts until they fully stop it, keep going to it. And that's the Trey Galloway I wanted to see in this game tonight. 12 assists and 36 minutes played. He was the man that made the offense go, and that's what you love to see. We'll get some more likes and dislikes in just a second. Malik Renu had 14 points, 8 rebounds. Offensively, had a great night. Only played 24 minutes because, again, he was in foul trouble. And, again, he fouled out. And we ought to be thanking our lucky stars that there weren't more minutes in the game when he had that terrible reach-in foul 40 feet from the basket when he came across half court, when he just swatted at the ball for absolutely no reason. If there was more time, that could have been a game-deciding foul out, which we've seen previously. Now, there was... Not much time left, and at the end of the day, it, it it didn't lead to anything crazy, but he fouls out so much, man. He's got to find a way to overcome that. Mackenzie Mbako had 14 points, only made four shots, but two of those were from downtown, and he went four or five from the free throw line, including the two big ones at the end. Don't know why they decided to foul him, but hey, we'll take that as he had 14 points on the evening. That's Spock talked about Trey Galloway with six. Xavier Johnson had five in his game back, a big three in his return. And you also had Anthony Leal with three. You had Gabe Cups and Anthony Walker with two. And you had Peyton Sparks with one win of the year by far. That's a good Wisconsin team. That's a tournament Wisconsin team who came to your house, who took a big punch in the mouth. We're going to get to that in a second. Came back took the lead, could have put it on you after the fire alarm delay, and Indiana responded. We got the biggest win of the year on our home floor and defended Assembly Hall 74-70 to over the Badgers. Well, coming up on Locked on Hoosiers, likes and dislikes. Hey, this time we got a lot more likes than we do dislikes. We've got a little bit of both, but a lot more likes on the side. We'll have that coming up for you in just a second on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Some of my favorite things about the Game Time app when I've used it numerous times, the views from your seats and all the venues is my favorite part. Pick your zone, pick your seat, and it's going to show you exactly what you're going to see, whether it be sports, music, or comedy, whatever the case may be. They're going to show you exactly what you're going to see. Plus, it's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. 
Welcome back here to Locked On Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Reminder, we are free and available, never behind a paywall, never have to pay for a subscription. We are always free wherever you get your podcast. Hoosiers beat the Badgers 74 to 70 inside of Assembly Hall, and we get into likes and dislikes, and we got to talk about the fire alarm delay. One of the craziest things I think I've ever seen. We've seen delays. We've seen stoppages in play. We've even seen evacuation of the buildings. I think back to when watching the NBA games when COVID hit, right? When COVID really started taking over that night before and they were evacuating and they canceled all the games and the Big East tournament was canceled the next day. Like that's what that kind of reminded me of in this game with the fire alarm. Man, it was so weird. They evacuated the whole place and Nobody really knew what was going on. And then we were like, okay, is this going to take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, a couple hours? Is this game going to be delayed, played tomorrow, finished out tonight? What in the world's going to happen? And then 20 minutes later, everybody, or less than that, it was like 15. Everybody's back out on the floor. Everybody was told, hey, turn around, come on back in. And um, yeah, one of the craziest things that I've seen in a long, long time. But all the broadcasters and everybody on TV, radio, and on Twitter and everybody was like, all right, who's going to respond better? Who is going to come out and have the better response in this game? And I think we can tag this as the fire alarm game. And we may look back on this and think of, all right, this was the fire alarm game where Hoosiers turned it on, turned it around, won out the rest of the regular season, made a run in the Big Ten tournament. Who knows, right? Who knows? Maybe this was the game that saved Mike Woodson's job, something we talked about on the episode yesterday. And look, can we be honest here? I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in us coming out of that delay because the second half was not going our way by any means. You want to talk about a dislike. A like was that first half and how it started. You were up by 15 points at one time in that first 20 minutes. Man, that's unbelievable. That's fantastic. And one of the better starts I've seen us have in Big Ten play. And then you let Wisconsin, who, again, is a good team, they came back and made it a ball game, and you're up by five at the break. But then you get into the second half, and all of the momentum had switched to Wisconsin. All the momentum had gone to the Badgers. They had started making a comeback. They had started making shots, getting defensive stops. Turnovers started stacking up for the Hoosiers in a battle that we lost 12-3, to by the way. If I'm Wisconsin, I am so upset. Only turn the ball over three times on the road in the Big Ten and you lose? Yeah, that's tough to to swallow. But all the momentum had gone towards Wisconsin. And then the fire alarm happened and everybody evacuated and and nobody really knew what was going on. And then coming out of a, I think, a shorter than anticipated break, they gave them five minutes and said, let's go. And I love that from the officials. I don't know if that was a Big Ten call. I don't know if that was an official on the site call. I don't know what that was. But that was great. I loved that. And they said, look, five minutes, you're here. Let's warm up. Let's shoot around and let's let's be done. Let's go. We got to play. We got to get this thing in and out of here. And the question became, okay, who's going to respond better? Who's going to be the better team out of this almost impromptu halftime? And it was Indiana. It was us. We were the better team. Both teams were punching each other back and forth. It was a heavyweight fight back and forth. Shot here, shot there, stop here, stop there. It was a great last 10 minutes of basketball, something we just haven't seen from our team in such a long time. And at the end of the day, we won the game. We beat that team, and we didn't beat ourselves. And I think that's something you really have to like in this game. And credit to Mike Woodson, credit to the staff, credit to the players and the leaders on this team who said, we're not losing this game. Man, they were fired up in this game, making shots, getting defensive stops, man. Trey Galloway was leading the charge in that as he has numerous times, not all the time, but numerous times this year where when he steps up and he's that emotional leader, they all follow him. They all follow him. And then one of the dislikes when Malik Renew fouled out, man, that's the most mad I've seen Mike Woodson maybe ever. Maybe ever I've ever seen Mike Woodson that fired up and upset, and rightfully so. It was unbelievable. It's unacceptable for Malik Renew to play that way and play so unsmart. I don't think that's a word, but we're going to use it here on Locked on Hoosiers. 
He just wasn't playing smart IQ basketball. That last foul was just so bad. And for him to be such a crucial player, he has to know better. You got to know better. And when Woodson was all sorts of upset and on his grill, and I'm glad, holding players accountable, coaching them, teaching them in big-time moments, I loved seeing that. You look at some of the stats here. I love Indiana shooting 43%. From three, that's fantastic. I love Indiana shooting 62% from the floor. Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. I know we're a team that goes in the paint, but man, that's a really tough number to beat for an opposing team. The field goal numbers, just the attempts kind of blow me away. I don't know where 69 shots came from for Wisconsin. There's no way that was the counter in my head by any means. We only had 47 as the Hoosiers, so... I dislike that. I don't like them getting that many shots. And in the first half, a lot of them were good looks for Wisconsin. Let's be honest. They just weren't making them. But sometimes you got to have that as a team to, to try to pull the upset. Both teams did not shoot well from the free throw line. Wisconsin shot three free throws. Are you kidding me? Three free throws? Something they're probably upset about. But outside of Malik Renu. Indiana just didn't foul all that much. And you got to think down the stretch, the Hoosiers had a ton of fouls to give. I mean, when they finally gave their first take foul, it was like the fourth one of the of the second half. So big time defensive plays by Indiana. You look at the rebounding, we won the rebounding battle as we should. We were a much taller team than them, much more physical team than them. And we won that rebounding battle, which was good to see. Bench points were even at 11 points in the paint. We actually got outscored there, believe it or not, but we hit some threes, which I think helps us out. And overall, man, I just love the game plan and I love the the focus on it. All right, we're going to break this down. We're going to make it simple. Give it to Trey Galloway and get out of the way and let him go do his thing. And that's exactly what happened here. Whether it was floaters in the lane, layups in transition, kicking it out for three, or lobbing it up to the seven-footer, Trey Galloway made this team go tonight, and he stepped up as a senior leader. I love seeing that. It should have happened a lot sooner in this season. There's no doubt about it. But it happened tonight, and Indiana beat Wisconsin. They got the biggest win of the year because of it. Coming up in our final segment on Locked on Hoosiers, we'll take a look at the women's team quickly. Got a nice, good win on the rope. And then we will look ahead for both of those squads. Women's team coming down to it. And men not too far behind them. That's all coming up here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. I told you yesterday, if you wanted to put $5 down, you could have done that with FanDuel on the Hoosiers to beat Wisconsin. Not only would you have had a good payout because they were the underdog, you also would have gotten $150 from FanDuel just for your $5 bet winning. So if you didn't do that, take the Hoosiers this weekend. Take an NBA team. I don't care. Find a bet that you're confident in. Five bucks down through FanDuel. They're going to give you $150. If it wins, quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and much more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. Final segment here on Locked On Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Taking a look quickly after the Indiana men got a good win. Both teams were playing at the same time. Didn't love that, but was able to keep up with both of them. And luckily, one team in one game was a lot less close than the other one. Uh, the Indiana women went on the road and did exactly what I thought they were going to do after a close first quarter against Northwestern, 26-21, to 21, and then even a closer first half, really, a five-point game in the second quarter, a total of 10-point lead at the half. The Indiana defense just went locked down, and the offense went red hot. 
and a 28 to 12 third quarter is what separated it all. And Indiana beats Northwestern 84 to 64. A quick box score check up here. McKenzie Holmes, 28 points in 23 minutes, man. 12 of 13 from the floor. Her and Khalil Ware did the exact same thing. She didn't have a double double, but almost and had nine rebounds to go along with those 28 points. Just one miss from the floor in 28 points. So her and Khalil Ware, just a little high five, if you will. They did fantastic, man. You also had Parrish and Scalia go for 11 each wasn't a great shooting night for those two but still got their points and how about Meister off the bench with 10 that's a big time thing that I think this Lady Hoosiers team is going to need come the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament gonna have to have some help off the bench in case there's foul trouble god forbid there be any sort of injury right you're just gonna have to have somebody off the bench or even if somebody's not playing their best game you've got to have somebody a six seventh man six seven girl if you will that comes off the bench and is a spark in March Madness. So 84-64, no sweat there. Didn't think it would be Indiana women get a big win. Their final game of the year coming up against Maryland. And we've got a few days for that. And that'll be at home in Assembly Hall, Maryland. Not a bad team. They're a middle of the pack Big Ten team. Uh, they're 8-8 eight eight in conference play, 16-11 and 11 overall on the season shouldn't be a problem. We've had a pretty good uh, done a pretty good job of defending home floor, and all of our losses in Big Ten have been on the road, and all of our losses in general have been on the road. The four of them at Illinois, at Ohio State, at Iowa, and at Stanford all the way back in Game Two. The biggest game though is the Iowa and Ohio State game. Keep your eyes on that, man. I mean, I've, I heard ticket prices are going for like four or 500 bucks for that game, and a women's game is just really unbelievable. So that's what's going on over there for the Indiana women. Uh, you look at the... You look at the men now after their win over Wisconsin, what's coming up for this men's Hoosiers team at Maryland, at Minnesota, and home for Michigan State. That's what we've got coming up. And coming off the biggest win of the year, you want to see a good response. You want to see a great performance moving forward. You want to see maybe some building off of this. And really, you just want to see guys stay healthy. It was good to see X back in the game. He didn't do a ton, but he didn't have to. And I think that's a sign where maybe he doesn't have to do a whole lot for this team to be overly successful. And I'd love to see the woes on the road go away. You're playing Maryland and Minnesota, two teams that, eh, right? I mean, you're you're playing teams that just aren't all that. Maryland is still under 500 in conference play. Minnesota is also right there at 500 in conference play. And Michigan State's a true bubble team after losing to Ohio State last weekend. So. You've got games that are winnable. You have games that you can build on and use this game and win over Wisconsin to your advantage. Use the fact that you just played your best game of the year, got your best win of the year, and maybe you figured out a little bit of a formula here. I don't know. And and maybe teams are going to see that and, and slow it down and knock it out, and then we're in trouble again. I, I don't know. But I think we've got to find ways to continue to play well with passion and still have room to grow just because you win one big game doesn't mean everything's fine everything's fixed and and we're all you know sunshine and rainbows here that's not what i'm saying this team didn't play perfect there are still things you can fix the breakdowns and i mean full on breakdowns on defense that can't happen in postseason play in the Big Ten tournament. You will not make a run in that. Those things can't happen next year under Mike Woodson if he remains to be the head coach. I think he probably saved his job with this win, though. I'll say that. I think he probably saved his job. But things are not fully okay. Things are not fully better. But, man, this was nice to have. It felt good to get this type of win. It felt good to prove that we could do it. And Indiana did it with a 74-70 to 70 win over the Wisconsin Badgers at home inside of Assembly Hall. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. Look, I appreciate y'all being here. I appreciate you making this your go-to spot for all things Indiana athletics. You are an everydayer. If you're not, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free. It takes one tap each. You'll be on your recommended page. You'll get notified when we go live and premiere our episodes. You can become a part of Hoosier Nation here on Locked on Hoosiers, so please become that. It helps us grow tremendously, and we would love for you to be a part of that. Reminder, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast, video, audio, doesn't matter. We are free each and every day, no matter what. So 
We'll have episodes going up the rest of the week, previewing the weekend, previewing the rest of the games, some of the biggest storylines around Indiana athletics with these basketball teams. Excited to start covering the women in postseason play. The men won't be far behind them. So much to get to and a whole lot of fun to be had here on Locked on Hoosier. So until next time, Hoosier fans, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.